I like all sorts of spiders, but I have to say that jumping spiders are probably my favorite. They're lethal predators of insects and other spiders, but they're also cute and fuzzy, making them look gentle. And for the most part, they are gentle. Many species are also quite curious as well. They don't get the name jumpers because they jump on people, but they sometimes will if you get close. But don't worry, they're harmless to humans. If I dunk this basketball, you subscribe. <laughs>
Habernatus coquatus is a species of jumping spider that is quite small, at about 3 sixteenths of an inch, 5 millimeters, and that's the female. It's so small you may never see one in your entire life. The first time I saw one was by chance. I was taking a break from hiking when I looked over and saw a tiny spider moving around. I quickly grabbed my camera and snapped off a few pics. I was amazed at the spider's color pattern, a mixture of black and tan that reminded me of a leopard. This was a male, which is smaller than the female. It had green coloring on its third back legs and brilliant red coloring on its face. In fact, it is sometimes called the red-faced jumping spider. This species can be found in the United States, Mexico, and Bermuda. Mavia inclemens, or commonly known as the dimorphic jumping spider, is quite a unique species of arachnid. It is named dimorphic due to there being two types of males, which differ in appearance and, oddly enough, behavior, and that difference is fairly extreme. If you saw both male morphs, most people wouldn't guess in a million years that they were of the same species. The female is somewhat translucent and has black hairs and spots over most of its legs. The cephalothorax, which includes the head, has hair that is beige, brown, and gold. There is orange coloring around each of its eyes, and she has two orange-reddish lines down the back of the abdomen. The male gray morph, often called the striped morph, isn't all that different from the female. It has distinctive orange pedipalps, black and white, beige or gray striped legs, and a gray abdomen with subtle orange markings. The tufted morph is really the one that looks quite different, almost not even like a jumping spider. It has a black body with three distinctive black hair tufts protruding from the head. Its legs are translucent yellow beige with sparse black hairs. The dimorphic jumping spider is found in the eastern United States and into southern Canada. A eh? Colonus sylvanus, formerly Theodina sylvana, commonly known as the woodland jumping spider, is thought to be an arboreal species. However, I have seen them on vehicles, window screens, as seen here, and holly bushes, as seen here. This is a male, but whereas some males can be reddish brown on the legs and cephalothorax, like this individual, others can be black. This is a female. Normally her abdomen would have white and orange coloring on the top, but this one's abdomen is green. This was almost certainly due to her eating a green insect prior to me finding and photographing her. And the insect was most likely a pale green assassin bug nymph, as seen here. Woodland jumpers are found in the eastern United States and down through Mexico and Ecuador. Our next guest is the bronze jumping spider. The male has a dark cephalothorax, nearly the color of molasses, with white bands along the sides. The cephalothorax of the female is lighter than that of the male, and the color of the abdomen can vary from greenish to beige to reddish, but they do not have the lateral white bands. Females grow to about 5 sixteenths of an inch, not including the legs, and males are slightly smaller than females. Bronze jumpers can be found in fields and woodlands, but also around homes. This spider is found throughout most of the continental United States and Canada. Only a handful of jumping spiders have such an extensive geographical range. The next two jumper species are in the genus Hensia, the males of which have very long front legs. The first one I'll feature is the common hence jumping spider. These are small spiders, with females being slightly larger than males, growing to about one-fifth of an inch, not including the legs. The males, however, are the ones that stand out. The male has very dark coloring in the front, which appears to fade toward the back. Its chelicery in the first pair of legs are brown, almost like molasses, while the other legs are translucent yellow. Its cephalothorax is brown, while its abdomen is more of a caramel color. It has bold white striping that encircles the cephalothorax and abdomen. The female looks completely different, and is pale, fuzzy, and usually has a yellowish-orange coloring. The abdomen is often marked with forward-pointing triangles along the center, as seen here. The common hence jumping spider is most common in the eastern half of the United States, but is also found through Mexico down into northern South America and the Caribbean islands. The next Hensia jumper is the white-jawed jumping spider. The male is almost like an albino version of the common hence jumping spider. The legs are translucent with white hairs. The chelicerae are covered with white hair as well. The cephalothorax and abdomen are orange and are surrounded by bold white coloring. The female does not have long front legs and is similar in appearance to the female common hence jumper. The white-jawed jumping spider is most common in the eastern United States, but also portions of southern Canada and the Caribbean islands. Okay, now we're getting to some truly epic-looking jumping spiders. The first time I got a close-up look of a male Putnam's jumping spider, I thought it looked like a painted woolly mammoth skull, or an ancient sub-Saharan African tribal mask, like some sort of warrior king. Just look at it. It looks like it was created by an artist. It is definitely one of the most handsome North American jumping spiders. 
The female doesn't really resemble the male, but even she has an impressive look, kind of like a little multicolored tarantula. The Putnam's jumping spider is found in the United States, from the East Coast to the Plain States. Before I feature our last two species, let me first mention two jumpers of which I recently made videos. I put a link to both, along with a link for the dimorphic jumping spider in the description. The bold jumping spider is one of the most common jumpers in North America and is also one of the largest. It is often seen in and around homes. Another common species you may see in and around your home is the tan jumping spider. Both of these species are among my favorites. Be sure to click on the links in the description for more information. The first time I saw a thin spine jumping spider, I was shocked. It was an absolutely jaw-dropping moment. This spider appeared as if it had just crawled out of a vat of melted gold. I had never seen anything like it. And to top it off, depending on which angle you looked, it had a green, purple, and pink iridescence. The thin spine jumping spider is relatively small at up to a fourth inch for the female, not including the legs. It occurs in the United States east of the Rocky Mountains and in adjacent Canadian provinces. Adults are found all summer on bushes and tall grasses and under stones and boards. This individual here I found under the soffit of my home. And now, last but in no way least, the king of North American jumping spiders, Phytopus mustaceus. It is perhaps the most beautiful of North American jumping spiders. At least that's my opinion. I mean, look at it. The male of the species has striking silver and gold coloring. Its big green eyes and red spots atop its head give it the appearance of a king. The female is somewhat similar to the male, but her coloring is a little more subdued, and her abdomen has an interesting, intricate patterning that is different from the male. The abdomen on the male is a mix of silver and black. I am always happy to observe and photograph this spider, and the Burl Ives song, Silver and Gold, often plays in my head when I do. Phytopus mustaceus is not a huge jumping spider, but does grow to about 7 sixteenths of an inch. Here's a male feeding on a common hence jumping spider. This is a great example of the size difference between these two jumping spiders. I hope you enjoyed this video featuring some of North America's most beautiful jumper species. If so, please like and subscribe if you haven't already. Thank you.